Hey everybody, what's going on and welcome to Guns N' Roses Central and it's time for another episode of Guns N' Roses True Stories. So today we're talking about the infamous Chinese democracy leak that happened in 2008, several months before the album actually came out. So there was a website called antiquiet.com who apparently got their hands on nine mixed, mastered, and new versions of songs from Guns N' Roses' long-awaited Ch album Chinese Democracy. And this is definitely no joke. So there are actually versions that were not previously heard before. So over the years, there have been a number of songs that had leaked. But these included some songs that the public had never heard before, and they include the final mastered versions as well. So nine songs leaked in total, and uh, six of the songs had already leaked in one unfinished form or another. So Better, The Blues, uh, which later was changed to Street of Dreams, the title track Madagascar, IRS, and There Was a Time. So those songs had been previously heard in one form or another. And then there was three previously unheard songs, which include Riyadh and the Bedouins, If the World, and an unknown track at that time. Who's laid, who'd later be revealed to be the song uh, Prostitute. And that's a song that apparently had been worked on for a very long time by the band. Now, Antiquiet is still up on the internet. And this is the original post that was posted by Kevin Kogel, who actually runs the site. Sometimes he's referred to as Squirrel. So he, this is what he had to say when the leaks uh, became public on June 18th, 2008. He said, well, to say that I'm living up to my reputation today is an understatement. I'd like to share with you nine tracks from the new Guns N' Roses album, Chinese Democracy. These are mastered, finished versions that you probably haven't heard. I always said that the more Axel and Geffen jerked around trying to figure out how to release this finally finished album that we've all been waiting for for over 13 years for, the greater the chances would be that it would slip out of a pressing plant or an office somewhere and wind up in the hands of some asshole with a blog. So, hey, I told you so. So a couple hours after the tracks uh, went up on Antiquiet's website, the player had been temporarily removed because it basically broke the entire internet. Also, we got a call from Guns N' Roses. Stay tuned. I'll let you all decide for yourselves, but if you ask me, Guns N' Roses are effing back and they'll be just fine. So several months after his website posted the leaked Guns N' Roses songs, Kevin Kogel actually pleaded uh, for some legal help on his blog. So he said, so remember when you guys... Uh, listen to the uh, new Guns N' Roses songs we got our hands on. Well, either way, the FBI sure does. They've been investigating, collecting information, and talking to me about that event ever since. More and more each day, it looks like I may be indicted. Pardon the self-indulgent post, and I may be just tripping, but just in case, if there are any lawyers out there horny for some high-profile copyright law battle, drop us a line. So several months after Kevin Kogel had actually leaked the tracks, in August of 2008, the FBI had actually arrested him. And uh, he was a Los Angeles area music blogger who, of course, admitted to leaking the tracks. So the article reads, The FBI on Wednesday arrested a Los Angeles area music blogger on suspicion of violating federal copyright laws after he allegedly streamed tracks of the unreleased Guns N' Roses album Chinese Democracy on his website. Kevin Kogel, who was 27 at the time, caused quite a stir earlier this summer when he allegedly began streaming nine songs from the album, which has been 15 years in the making, on his blog Antiquiet. So the traffic crashed the site almost immediately, and shortly afterward, the songs were removed from the, at the band's request. But users who recorded the streams quickly made the songs available on file-sharing sites. It's unknown how Kogel allegedly required the material. So the FBI began investigating the incident in late June, and earlier this week, Kogel posted a plea for legal help on his blog, writing that the more and more each day, it looks like I may be indicted. The Family Entertainment and Copyright Act of 2005 makes the sharing of pre-release copyright material a felony, punishable by up to three years in prison and up to $250,000 in fines. According to his arrest affidavit, Kogel admitted to posting the songs according to the Los Angeles Times. So according to a post on Antiquiet shortly after his arrest, Kogel was released under a $10,000 signature bond and is scheduled to appear at a preliminary hearing on September 17, 2008. So following his appearance in court, Kogel actually posted an update on his blog. So he titled it, The United States of America Cares a Lot About Democracy. So he said, Axel Rose didn't call the FBI, but today it came more and more obvious that someone really was serious about the threat. Johnny and I sat on a pew at the U.S. District Court building in downtown L.A. A squirrel sat behind the glass in handcuffs and still in his jammies since the FBI arrested him at 6.59 this morning. 
After five or so cases were presented, the United States of America presented her case against Squirrel. The proceeding was mostly about what his bail was going to be set at. The USA requested the bail be set at $50,000. Squirrel's court-appointed attorney thankfully called BS on that one and recommended the bail be $5,000 and that this case is uh, the kind of case where the defendant should have been summoned to appear instead of being accosted by five FBI agents at his home in a quiet neighborhood. Interestingly, the judge chimed in to add that he actually recommended that it be Summons case and wasn't sure why it went down as it did. He also dismissed the idea presented by the USA that squirrels be forbidden to use the internet. In the end, the judge ruled that his bail would be in the form of a signature bond at $10,000. What that means is that Squirrel has to remain within the Central District of California until the next court date or someone has to cough up $10,000. So for now, he's home. Stay tuned. Moving forward, a preliminary hearing has been scheduled for September 17th at 4.30 p.m. and the arraignment for September 22nd at 8.30 a.m. Both will be at the U.S. District Court building, and they basically gave the address. They said, Squirrel, Johnny, and I appreciate your concern and warm wishes during these hard times as we deal with democracy. So David J.P. Uh, Kaloyanis um, actually agreed to defend Squirrel, and they're actually looking to accept donations to cover his extensive legal costs. So... After Kevin Kogel's arrest, TechDirt did an article about how the blogger's arrest resulted in much more downloading of GNR's music. And they also said that arresting Kevin Kogel appear, could appear as being anti-fan, at least according to GNR fans. So Bob Lefsetz did a quick email back and forth exchange with Eric Garland of Big Champagne, uh, the company that f basically tracks file sharing activity. And Garland points out that prior to Kevin Kogel's arrest, there was almost no sharing of Chinese democracy songs, despite the fact that the leak happened a while back. However, since the arrest, the numbers have shot way up, as the arrest has really only served to alert the public that the album is available for download on BitTorrent. Now, following the actual arrest, it was revealed that Universal Music actually showed Best Buy, who actually ended up selling Guns N' Roses uh, Chinese Democracy album exclusively in the U.S. Uh, they, U Universal basically showed Best Buy the search engine traffic results shortly after the case to capitalize on interest and basically help them with the distribution deal. Now, in November of 2008, the same month that Chinese Democracy was set to be released, Kevin Gogol ended up pleading guilty to the charges against him. So he faced a maximum of one year of confinement when sentenced in Los Angeles federal court on March 3rd, but he faces no jail time in his plea deal cut with prosecutors in which the 28-year-old agreed to cooperate with authorities. So Mr. Kogel is cooperating with the government in our efforts to find the original source of the leak, the federal prosecutor had said in a telephone interview. Now, following his ordeal, Kevin Kogel talked a bit about what had happened since the trial. So in the end, he got sentenced to two months of house arrest and as part of the agreement with prosecutors he made, um, he would also produce uh, some PSAs for the RIAA, which is the Recording Industry Association of America. And in the end, he revealed that he, as he was supposed to do these PSAs, the RIAA never ended up filming them because, according to the RIAA, the production costs were too high. Now, he also did say in another interview that file shares can get effed in the A by the RIAA, now, in 2014, Kogel claimed that he could not be charged for pre-releasing copyrighted material because the court could not prove that the album was being prepared for commercial distribution, stating that the U.S. government would have to prove in court that Chinese democracy was really coming, and no one in the RIAA or the label had informed the government that these songs had been lying around for 14 years, only that they had cost $12 million. Now, around the time of all this news of Kogel being arrested and leaking the tracks, uh, ex-Guns N' Roses guitarist Slash was actually interviewed about the news. So, in a recent interview with the Los Angeles Times, he said, I hope he rots in jail, referring to Kevin Kogel. He said, it's going to affect the sales of the record, and it's not fair. The internet is what it is, and you have to deal with it accordingly. But I think someone goes and steals something, it's theft. Now, about a year after his arrest, Kevin Kogel actually spoke. Now, he did say, I do apologize to Axel for the disrespect, Kevin Kogel says, and he did respond to Slash's interview and Slash's statements about himself as well. So the details of his probation, which I had said before included two months of uh, home confinement, still needed to be ironed out at that time, though he still had access to a computer. He said they made it clear that the court did not want to hinder my ability to earn a living as a web developer or continue running anti-quiet. 
Kogel told MTV News via email. So Kogel carries a great deal of remorse for what he did, though he never did intend to harm Axl Rose. He was just a fan who was excited about a band he loved. I've come to respect artists' right to determine how their art is released. I do apologize to Axel for that disrespect, he said. As a fan who lost faith in all the promises of the release, I didn't see too many other options at the time. But in a fair world, it's not my place to judge, let alone act. Though Kogel says he was unaware of any comments that Rose might have made about him, he did take some quotes by former Guns N' Roses guitar Slash pretty personally. A friend of mine conducted an interview with Slash last year in which he called me a thief and wished I'd rot in jail, he said. I found that surprisingly crass, especially considering the guy had made no bones about shoplifting cassette tapes with the same rationale as today's downloaders, so if he wants to see me in jail, I'll see him in the cafeteria. Now, in 2009, Axl Rose did an interview where he talked about the nine-song leak from AntiQuiet.com. So he said, having someone jeopardize your efforts so cavalierly is pretty much a nightmare. I don't know that it hurt us, though, at least as one might think. Hard to say. That's not to imply that leaks don't hurt artists, but that they were earlier roughs and the level of sound quality is much higher with the finals. That said, you have those who become emotionally attached to how the leaks sound, which, for better or worse, usually isn't so great to contend with, and it seems that those who often do so and complain publicly, oddly and coincidentally, have a history of being, basically being detractors as well as they're somehow considered part of the fan base. Now in 2008, Axel was answering a bunch of fan questions through some of the open chats he was doing around the time of the album's release, and one fan asked him, Hey Axel, what effect do leaks really have on the band and the album? There's a lot of speculation but no clear answer, thanks for your time. Axel said, basically for us, it's devastating across the board. And when you have such a majority openly justifying their actions and throwing out nonsense such as it's not actually stealing as the original is still with whomever, it's unbelievably insane. It exists because of the greed of the record industry, the greed of the large-scale pirating, the ease and common nature now of the act itself, and personal motivations such as popularity among certain groups, possible momentary media recognition, etc. And it's too rampant and widespread. It's simply, simply too huge of a mess for the courts to deal with. And with those numbers and the expense and manpower involved necessary at this time to curtail it, obviously there are more serious crimes for society to focus on. Besides, F musicians, right? If they don't make enough money already, then they probably suck anyways. I ain't crying for no rich dude, whatever. And who knows, whenever our numbers on the torrent sites are for this album, I don't know. So I don't know how it's affected us in terms of sales this time around. Maybe not, but with the economy and the core of our market, I think there's possibility that it has a negative effect. Anyone? So that does it for this episode of Guns N' Roses True Story. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know what your thoughts are. Do you think that the, uh, the FBI overreacted in this case, or do you think the response was actually proper? Let me know in the comment section down below. Be sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed this episode. And also make sure you subscribe if you love Guns N' Roses as much as I do. You guys can also follow me on Twitter and Facebook. The links to my social media channels are down below. And you can also go support me on Patreon as well. The links to that are also below in the description box. Take care.